Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to New Zor Education. Um, we continue talking about properties uh, of uh, mm, matrix multiplication. Now, let's recall that I started um, looking for a reasonable definition of the matrix multiplication based on the property. The property of uh, the following type. If you combine two linear transformations of one particular vector, first with the matrix A uh, and then with the matrix B, uh, it would be the same as if properly defined multiplication of these two matrices is applied to the same vector U. So, then we were talking about that this is actually associativity. Um, so we introduced the multiplication of matrix by vector and matrix by matrix using this particular property. And finally, um, at the previous lecture, in the general case of multiplication of any matrices, I basically defined the final form of the matrix multiplication. Now, what I would like to do is basically going backwards from the definition as it, as, it, as it was given in the previous lecture, the general definition of the product of two matrices, I will derive all the nice properties, including the associativity. So that's the purpose of today's lecture. Actually, it will be uh, two lectures, because it's too long, actually. So, um, having this in mind, I would like to spend uh, a few minutes just talking about notation which I'm going to use. So, um, matrices, let's use uh, capital Latin letters, uh, will have dimensions, number of rows and number of columns, let's say K times L, which means K rows L columns. And uh, elements of these matrices will have two indices, the row index and the column index, where they are standing. So if you have a matrix and it has certain elements, so this particular element would be in the i's row and j's column, right? So I will use the lowercase usually for the elements of the matrix and ij means basically the element which stands on i's row and j's column. Now if I would like to talk about the whole row, which is a row vector, then I will use this um, bar on the top to signify this is a vector. I is fixed because this is the i's row, and this is a star instead of a column, which means everything in that row. Now, if I would like to talk about the, the, the vector, which is uh, the column vector in, in the matrix, I will use the second index equal to number of row, uh, num the column number, and the first one would be a star, which means everything in this particular column. Now, using this language, I can say um, the following as far as the definition. Um, if you have a matrix A times matrix B, and this is matrix C, uh, then Cij, which means the element in the product of two matrices, which is in the i's row and j's column, is a scalar product of row vector i uh, in the matrix A and column vec vector j in the matrix B. So this is basically the definition. And this scalar product means A I1 times B 1 J plus A, let me just write it down. A1 uh, I I1 times B 1 J plus A I2 times B 2 J plus etc. plus A, whatever the last index is. L, let's say, I L times B L J. In other words, I might actually use 
the expression which contains the Greek symbol sigma, capital sigma, which basically is the same thing as this, pi, uh, let's use index uh, Q, for instance, times B Q J, where index Q is from 1 to the capital L. So this is just a shorter uh, notation for this one. So I'm, I'm going to use this particular notation. Um, another thing also sometimes might be handy. If my matrix A has dimensions, let's say, K by L, most likely I will use indices lowercase k and lowercase l for elements of this matrix, which in, 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 in turn, it implies actually lowercase k is changing from 1 to capital K, lowercase l is changing from 1 to capital L. So that's just a convenience uh, to, to, to remind basically the dimensions of the matrix. Now, the first and uh, very important property of this um, multiplication which I wanted to talk about is um, it's actually a requirement, it's not a, it's not a property. It's a uh, very immediate consequence from the definition. Now, um, the property is the following. If A has size K by L and B has a size M by N, then multiplication is possible only if L is equal to M. The number of columns in the A, which is on the left, is equal to number of rows in the B, which is on the right of the product. Why? It's, it, it's obvious why, because again, every element, again, Cij is equal to A i star times B star J, right? Now, this is a scalar product of a row vector by a column vector. Scalar product can, also, can only be um, uh, obtained is, uh, if, uh, if the dimensions of these two vectors is the same. Now, what's the dimension of the row vector uh, uh, A? That's the number of elements in one row, which is number of columns in the, t in the whole table, right? If this is the table, this is the row, number of elements in the row, that's number of columns. Now, this is a column vector, which is this one, right? Number of elements in the column is equal to number of rows. So number of rows here should be equal to number of columns here. So that's why L should be equal to M. So now, whenever I will have something like this, I will not have KL and MN. I would have KM and MN. So these two are supposed to be the same. And what's the dimension of the result? Obviously, this is number of rows and this is number of columns. Again, from the same formula, because the index C can be changed anywhere from the beginning of the number of rows in A to the very end, which means from 1 to K in this case. And number J, uh, this is the uh, J's column vector. And if it's a column vector, it means it's changing as much as the number of columns, which is here. So, M should be the same. This is number of columns equal to number of rows. Number of rows here and number of columns on the right are the results of the dimension. So this is the, uh, the, the property, if you wish, of the multiplication. Let me rewrite it in this way. K times L matrix, if you multiply it by L times N as a matrix, the result would be K times N. Right? So just keep it in mind. This is uh, the dimension of the matrix, which is a product. Now, next is related to um, the following fact. When you were talking about multiplication of numbers, there are two numbers which are actually 
like standing in, uh, aside from anything else. And they are very particular uh, numbers and we um, really treat them separately if you wish. These numbers are 0 and 1. Why? Well, for obvious reasons. If you multiply anything by 0, you will get 0. And if you multiply anything by 1, you get that anything you, you had before, right? So, these are properties of numbers. My, now, now, my question is, is there anything analogous among the matrices? And the, and the answer is yes. The obvious analog of the zero in the matrix world is the matrix which contains only zeros. Now, if you have a product of two matrices and all elements of B is equal to zero, then obviously element, all, all elements of C would be equal to zero as well. Right? Because again, from the same formula, these are all elements which are equal to zero, and we summarize them for all the different indices which are within star. So you sum zeros, you'll get zero. So, matrix which is uh, which has all the elements equal to zero, plays the role of zero in multiplication, which means everything multiplied by this matrix, by the way, on the right or on the left, doesn't really matter, would result in zero, regardless of the value of the second matrix. So that's obvious. Now, how about one? One is a little bit more interesting, I would say. Uh, but again, here is basically the... Um, some, something which, which, which you can think about it. Um, let, let's approach this from transformation, linear transformation standpoint. Now, is there a linear transformation which really combined with anything else, any other transformation, uh, would basically result in, in, in the same other transformation, whatever it was? Or, if you wish, going back to the vectors, is there a linear transformation of the vectors which d does not change the vectors? Well, obviously, yes, there is. How about this one? In two-dimensional space, for instance, it's this one. Right? It doesn't change anything. And if you combine this with anything else, it would be like that anything else acted alone, right? Now, how this transformation can be written as a matrix. Well, let's just write it slightly differently. Instead of u2, I will have 0 times u1 plus 1 times u2. And this is not just u1, it's 1 times u1 plus 0 times u2. So what's the matrix of transformation? Now you see the matrix, right? It's the coefficients. It's 1, 0, 0, 1. So the matrix has ones along the main diagonal. And obviously, if you have, instead of two dimension, three dimensions would be exactly the same. It would be diagonal matrix. So any matrix which has only elements along the main diagonal from the top left to the bottom right equal to one, and all others are zero, these matrices represent an identity transformation, transformation which does not change the vectors and it doesn't change uh, any other matrix if you multiply it. And let's just try to prove it. And it's very simple. So let's consider that these guys, AII, are equal to 1 and AIJ equals to 0 for I not equal to J. Right? So that's what main diagonal is equal to 1 and everything outside of the main diagonal which means column not equal to row on the main diagonal column and row have exactly the same index right from 1 to the maximum and everything outside of the main diagonal has different uh, row and num uh, row and column numbers so this is a condition okay now this is a summation right it's a summation from AI1 times B1J plus AI2 times B2J plus etc. Right? So, only one 
a i something is not equal to zero only the one which has uh, has two indices equal to i so this is basically equal to i i b i j right so when this index is equal to i only in this case we have i one one i i a i i is equal to one all others are zero and will be dismissed and this is equal to since this is one this is equal to b i j so what do we have c i j is equal to b i j right so if my matrix a is identity matrix then b and c are exactly the same which means multiplication by this identity matrix doesn't really change it now this is multiplication on the left and obviously if instead of a you have b matrix which is equal to um unit matrix you will have exactly the same thing then a would be preserved so that's another property uh, of the multiplication it has as we see an equivalent of a unit matrix and the equivalent of a zero matrix well actually many different equivalents for different sizes for each size we have its own all right now um, the last thing which I wanted to talk about in, in this presentation, the last property, is uh, commutative property. Well, we know that multiplication of numbers has this property. Mul numbers are commuting if we multiply them. How about matrices? Well, before addressing this in, in some kind of a general matrix notation with indices i j k l etc etc i would like to to talk more um uh more, more geometrically if you wish now matrices are reflecting linear transformation transformations of vectors right now let's think about two different linear transformations apply these two transformations to the same vector in one order and then we will change the order of these transformations and see if we will get the same result well what kind of transformation we can apply well we know we can stretch it in any direction or just increase the length which means any direction uh, or we can reflect relative to some axis right or we can rotate well let's think about it. if we rotate by angle let's say phi and then rotate by angle psi is it the same as rotation first by psi and then by phi well yes so these two transformations do commute Le let's say another let's say you are stretching everything every vector you are increasing the length of this vector preserving the direction you are increasing the length by let's say some factor like two and then you increase again by another factor of three. Would these two commute? Is it the same? You stretch it by factor of two and then by three, or you first by three and then by two? Answer is yes, they do commute. But let me tell you another transformation, which is not exactly um, commuting with some other transformation which I wanted to present to you. Let's take the transformation of stretching uh, along some axis let's say along the x-axis now what does it mean well if you have a vector here let's say it has a unit length then the result would be and I'm stretching by a factor of 2 the result will be 2 now if you have a unit length if you have a vector with two coordinates 1 1 I'm stretching only along the x-axis so the result of this would be this vector so this would be stretched to this this would be stretched to this because I'm stretching only relative to the along the x-direction only right is it linear transformation yes of course it is linear transformation can it be this, uh, expressed in the formula of course it can uh, v1 is equal to 2u1 and v2 is equal to u2 
right? So this is abscissa x coordinate, this is ordinate, at y coordinate. So y coordinate remains the same, and x coordinate is increased by, by, by the factor of 2. So this is my linear transformation, and obviously it is linear. And uh, let's consider another transformation. Another transformation would be reflection relative to the bisector of the main angle. Now, how this reflection can be expressed in the form of linear transformation? Well, we are changing abscissa to ordinate and ordinate to abscissa, right? So it would be v1 is equal to u2 and v2 is equal to u1. We are exchanging x and y coordinates. This used to be abscissa, now it's, it's ordinate. This used to be ordinate, now it's abscissa. So that's what symmetry relatively to the bisector of the main uh, diagonal is. Now, what if we combine these two? Are these commuting um, uh, transformations? Well, let's think about this unit vector along the x-axis. So, let's first apply stretching along the x-axis. So, from this, it became this. Now we are reflecting relatively to the axis, so it becomes this. This is my final point. All right. What if I will change the order of transformation? First, I will reflect, and then I will stretch along the x-axis. If I reflect my one uh, vector, my unit vector, along the x-axis, if I will reflect it relative to this, I will get vector uh, which, which is this. One vector along the y-axis. Now I'm stretching but only across the x-axis. So if x-axis was equal to zero it doesn't really stretch at all so the vector remains as is. And the result is basically this smaller vector. Different result. So we suspect that these two transformations stretching along the x-axis and reflection relative to um, uh, bisector of the angle uh, are not commuting. Well, let's check it explicitly uh, using the algebra of matrices. We have two, these two different transformations. Let's just describe these transformations in a matrix format and then we will multiply these matrices A times B or B times A and see if we will have different results, right? So what is this matrix? Well, let's think about this way. Uh, this is not just u2, this is 0 times u1 plus u2. 1 times u2 plus 0 times u2, right? So 2, 0, 0, 1. 2, 0, 0, 1. Now, this one, I can write it down as 0 times u1 plus 1 times u2. 1 times u1 plus 0 times u2. So this matrix B is equal to 0, 1, 1, 0. All right? Okay, great. Now let's multiply. According to the rules of matrix multiplication. So now we will check with an algebra our geometric intuition. All right. A times B equals this matrix times this. This is 2 by 2. This is 2 by 2. Result would be 2 by 2. And uh, coordinate 1, 1 means first row times first column. 2 times 0, 0 times 1. It's 0 and 0, it's 0. Now, this is first row, second column first row vector, second column vector. 2 times 1, 2, 0 times 0, 0. Now, element 2, 1. So it's second row vector times uh, the 0 times 0, 1 times 1. Add them up, we'll get, zero, uh, we'll get 1. And finally, 2, 2. So it's second row by second column. 0 times 1. It's 0, 1 times 0 is 0, add them up, 0. So this is the result. 
great. B times C. So it's this times this. Let's just change the order. Okay. 1, 1 means first row times first column, which is 0 times 2 plus 1 times 0. It's 0. 1, 2. So it's first row, second column. 0, 0 plus 1 times 1. It's 1. Element 2, 1. Second row, first column. 1 times 2, it's 2. And 0, it's 0, 2. And element 2, 2, it's second row times second column. 0 times 1 and 1 times 0, it's 0. So as you see, we have different matrices as a result of multiplication. So that was my point. Matrices do not necessarily commute. Interesting, um, maybe disappointing, I don't know. Um, but actually, the transformations which are not really commuting with each other are quite often happen in mathematics. It's only with numbers seems to be, everything seems to be okay. With vectors, if you don't go beyond the scalar product, it's also fine. But even if you go to a vector product of the vectors, like cross product, it's already non-commuting, right? So in, in, in principle, commutative property is not always um, adhered to in different. Associative is much more often actually um, uh, applicable to different operations and transformations. Anyway, that was the, the, the first part of my theoretical um, uh, foundation uh, where I wanted to explain different properties of the operation of multiplication. The second part would also be uh, with, with some other properties and that would probably conclude my, my theory about matrices. Then we will go to the, pro to, to, to the problems, and etc. Et so, that's it for today. I do suggest you to read exactly the same material in the notes for this lecture on unizor.com. Uh, also, if you uh, sign in as a student, and if you do have a supervisor or a parent um, who can enroll you into different topics, you can also take exams on these topics, which is a very, very useful thing. I do suggest you to do this. Okay, that's, that's it for today. Thanks very much and good luck.